Ah, the atom, one of the universe's most basic building blocks. For thousands of years, they were considered to be the smallest things there were. And then, thanks to the work of J.J. Thompson, Ernest Rutherford, and Niels Bohr, we knew that the atom was comprised of three main particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons. But if we found particles smaller than an atom, it begs the question, is there anything smaller than a proton? The word atom originated in ancient Greece, literally translating as indivisible, something that cannot be divided. This idea persisted in small scientific circles through the millennia until eventually J.J. Thompson discovered the atom. Thompson devised the plum pudding model, where the atom was comprised of two components, sponge and plums. The sponge was a large positive core that gave the atom its shape, existing as a uniform cloud of charge, and the plums were small negative charges that dotted the positive core. However, this theory was soon usurped by Ernest Rutherford's idea, the nuclear model. Rutherford found, by bombarding gold foil with alpha particles, that Thompson's idea was wrong. He proposed that the atom was mostly empty, with a small, dense, positive nucleus at the centre, which is made up of protons and was orbited by tiny negative charges called electrons. The nucleus of the atom was proposed to be very small and very dense. For example, a single proton has a diameter of one quadrillionth of a metre. That's a million billion times smaller. In terms of density, nuclear material is so dense that just a teaspoon of it is the same mass as Mount Everest, or a trillion bags of sugar. Niels Bohr and James Chadwick eventually improved upon this idea, regimenting electrons into specific set energy levels and adding neutrons to the nucleus. And so the once indivisible atom was split into three distinct particles and a lot of empty space. These three particles make up the bread and butter of matter. They're quite literally all you are. Or are they? Well, you see, the Greeks broke up the elements into atoms, and 1930s physicists broke up the atom into protons, neutrons, and electrons. So surely you can break up these particles even more into smaller bits, right? Well, it turns out you can. Protons and neutrons are made up of smaller particles called quarks. Both protons and neutrons belong to a family of subatomic particles called baryons, and these baryons are all made up of three quarks each, and quarks kind of like it that way. Fortunately for them, the song All By Myself cannot apply to quarks. They are bound together exceptionally strongly. The force between them is so strong that if you were to provide enough energy to pry a quark out of a baryon, There'd be so much energy concentrated in one spot that a pair of quarks would spontaneously appear out of that energy, one of which would go into the baryon, and one would go to the supposedly free quark, bind to it, forming a two-quarked particle called a meson. So instead of a free quark, you just have two new ones bound together in larger particles. Physics, huh? Now what actually binds quarks together are massless particles called gluons. The gluons provide the strong force between quarks, and it is what keeps them together. The strong force is very aptly named. There are four fundamental forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak forces. Now here's a comparison of these forces' strengths. Take the Earth. It weighs 6 septillion kilograms, and because of this, its gravity has the strength to keep everything on Earth that isn't travelling faster than 25,000 miles per hour or 11 kilometers per second glued to it. But the force of electromagnetism is so much stronger than gravity that if you get a small fridge magnet less than a centimetre across, you can make a paperclip defy gravity with ease. In fact, there are stars the size of the Earth that have magnetic fields so strong that they can be seen across the universe itself. So, it's pretty strong.
but electromagnetism pales in comparison to the strong force, as it is a hundred times weaker than it. But don't worry, if you think someone's going to construct some strong force super weapon, the strong force only has a range of about a trillionth of a meter, so it's good at binding quarks and atoms together, but not much else. Now quarks come in six varieties called flavors. These include the up quarks, down quarks, strange quarks, charm quarks, bottom quarks, and top quarks. Each flavor has a different mass and charge, and higher mass quarks always try to decay into smaller ones. The two most common quarks are up and down. Protons and neutrons are made up exclusively of these. Every proton contains two ups and a down, whereas neutrons contain two downs and an up. Quarks are part of a larger family of fundamental particles called the Standard Model. The Standard Model is probably the most important thing that non-physics people don't know about. Quantum physics, astrophysics and cosmology are all built upon this shrine of scientific achievement. The Standard Model is split up into two main groups. All matter that we know of is made up of fermions, and fermions can be further split into two groups, quarks and leptons. Quarks we've already covered, but leptons are something quite different. Whereas quarks bind together to create larger particles, like baryons and mesons, leptons prefer to remain alone. The most famous of the leptons is the electron. It's what's responsible for all chemical reactions in the universe, and without electrons, the universe would be a watery collection of tiny particles. The electron has two cousins, the muon and the tau. All three of them are negatively charged, but where electrons are tiny in terms of mass, muons and taus are considerably heavier. Each lepton has a sister neutrino, a group of very interesting particles. Neutrinos are neutrally charged particles that are exceptionally tiny and have virtually no mass. They are mysterious ghost particles that, despite the fact that they barely interact with anything at all, are actually essential to the universe as we know it. Without neutrinos, the sun wouldn't shine, and supernovae, exploding stars that are responsible for creating all heavy elements in the universe, would collapse into black holes, and all of existence would be void of life. But it's all very well having an abundance of matter particles to choose from, but without any rules or any laws to live by, these particles are inane and useless. So that's where bosons fit in. Bosons are the particles that tell the fermions what to do, conveying the four fundamental forces of nature as they do so. The boson of the strong force is the gluon, binding quarks together with a measurable strength. The boson of the electromagnetic force is the photon. These photons are virtual, existing for such a short amount of time that it is unsure whether they actually exist or not. These photons tell charged particles whether or not to repel or attract one another. If they are like charges, they'll repel, and if they are opposite, they'll attract. For the weak force, there are the W+, W-, and the Z boson. These are very heavy particles that have a very small range before decaying into fermionic particles like electrons and up quarks. Because of this, the weak force is responsible for a type of radioactive decay called beta decay, a process that helps keep the core of the Earth so hot that it can power tectonic plate movements. However, the boson for gravity is a little controversial. The graviton, the particle that's supposed to convey the gravitational force, is as yet unproven. It is unknown why we haven't found this cornerstone particle, but physicists are pretty sure it exists. If it doesn't, then physics itself may have to be rethought. And there we have it. It turns out there's a whole other universe of particles within the subatomic range. From matter-forming quarks to the life-essential leptons and law-giving bosons, the universe is reliant on these entities for its function and physical existence. Elementary particles, the reason for all matter and light in the universe, the reason why the universe can create galaxies and stars and life, and of course, the reason for this video.